At this point, there's still not a conflict. Okay. All right. So here's the thing, uh, Mr. Moreno Vasquez. I want you to hear me and I want you to internalize what I'm saying, okay? If you want another attorney, you need to hire one. Do you understand? Yes. I don't know what the issue you may or may not have with your attorney. Sometimes the issue people have with an attorney is they're not getting the offer. They're not getting the offer that they want. Here's the thing. I've been a defense attorney. I've been a prosecutor. In this court, I require that the state tender an offer to the defense. You can either accept it or reject it, or you can tell your attorney I'm accepting it, in which case we will do a plea bargain agreement. Everyone, please whisper. Thank you, Judge. If they make an offer and you want to accept it, then we'll do the plea paperwork. You will enter your plea. If they make an offer and you say, I'm not accepting it, then one or two things will happen. Either you go to your attorney and say, I'm not accepting this offer, but I will accept A, B, or C offer. That is what's called a counter offer. Your attorney will take what you will accept, if that's the case, to the state. And then at that point, the state can say, all right, we will accept the offer that you want, or as we call it, the counter offer, or the state will say, we're rejecting that offer. And the only offer we will make you is the offer we made you. Do you understand? Can I say something? Yes. If you want to say something about what the state offer is, no, because I'm not allowed to hear that. Plea negotiations are supposed to be confidential unless you're accepting an offer. Do you understand? Yes. If you want to talk about the facts of your case, the only way I will hear the facts of your case is if you are entering a plea bargain agreement or if there's a jury trial or a bench trial. Do you understand? Yes, I just want to talk about my case, that's all. No, the person you speak to your case about is your attorney. Okay, si, si me lo puede cambiar, no? Yes, can you change attorneys or not? All right, hear me, hear me clearly. Abogado, you need to hire one. I don't know why people think that when attorneys are appointed to them, and I mean no disrespect when I say this, it appears to me that sometimes beggars are becoming choosers. If you see somebody who needs food and you offer them a hamburger, and they say, no, I want lobster. This is your attorney. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this attorney. If you want another attorney, you need to hire one. Do you understand? Okay. Yes, it's been a long time and he has never said anything to me. He never said anything to me. So I'm just waiting. Oh, well, here's the thing. You're here. He's here. He can say something to you today. But my question for you is, did you receive the offer? Yes or no? No. No. All right. So he said, I, I know, I know. But if you will indulge the court, he's going to tender the offer to you that the state has made. When he tenders the offer to you, I want you to internalize it. Think about it. And then you will come back before the court and you will let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? Yes, I understood. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. On Jose Lozano, is this going to be a long hearing? I don't have any witnesses either, Judge. Oh. I, I just have the, the uh, complaining witnesses are on Zoom for a PSI. All right. Let's, where's Mr. Lozano? All right, everyone, please have a seat. If you're not on this case, court is calling. 2021 CR 7016, State of Texas versus Jose Lozano.
Can I have the parties announced for the record for the state? Thank you. Welcome to the state, Your Honor. Defense. Raymond, Raymond Martins and Mr. Lozano. And are you Mr. Lozano? All right. We are here for sentencing. A jury found you guilty. Just one moment. And they found you guilty of the offense of theft, $300,000 or more as charged in the indictment. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? We have, Your Honor. Defense. Yes, Your Honor. Any corrections or additions to the PSI report state? No, Your Honor. Defense. No, Your Honor. All right. State, what are you requesting? Your Honor, we're asking that you sentence the defendant to 15 years in the prison. All right. And the reason? Your Honor, the defendant was convicted of a first degree uh, felony offense in this case. Reading the TAP evaluation, he's shown no remorse for his actions. He doesn't say this was the result of uh, being under the influence of drugs or alcohol. His story about how he says this happens is just not credible. It doesn't, um, doesn't jive with the uh, evidence that we saw at trial. Um, he says that uh, someone offered to sell him $300 worth of items, over $300 worth of items for $600 to $800. He says his friend brought the trailer to him. Um, the evidence that was elicited at trial indicated that a window of the truck was broken. Um, so I, it's pretty clear to me that uh, he knew this. these items were, I, I, you know, at the very least he knew these items were stolen. Um, but Your Honor, what he's convicted of is, is theft. Um, but, and I guess the other part of this, the TAP evaluation, they talked about his home life a little bit. Mm -hmm. He says he has regular contact with all his kids, but uh, evidence elicited at the trial was he's not paying any kind of child support to Edith Serrano. That was one of the victims you may recall, Your Honor. Or I'm sorry, one of the witnesses at, at the trial, Your Honor. Um, I, and I just want to, I know you were uh, presided over this case, Judge, so you remember the testimony, but uh, Terry Kirkbride and his wife are moving from California to Florida, and they lost almost everything as a result of this theft, Your Honor. Uh, but what Terry said on the stand is is what really stuck with me. And what he said is, uh, the hardest part about this is that he left, he lost things in this theft as a result of this theft, as a result of the actions of the defendant that cannot be replaced. So the hardest part of that for him uh, were the photos that are just gone forever. Uh, the things that he inherited, the things that his wife inherited, they're gone forever. Uh, items uh, from his military career that are gone forever, uh, damaged or lost. Uh, and so that's what I want to emphasize to the court. Uh, and the other part of the uh, thing I want to emphasize to the court, Your Honor, is we're asking for this sentence um, to protect the community from these types of thefts. Uh, this property crime, I think, uh, especially folks who are involved in the criminal justice system, we can get sort of jaded and think, well, nobody died, right? Um, but these crimes are, are very serious. And this is this is some, the victims in this case lost nearly everything that we, they own. Um, and so your honor, we're asking that you protect the community from these types of crimes and sentence the defendant to 15 years in the prison. All right, defense. Judge, if the court would call from the facts of the case, I think Mr. Lozano's explanation is perfectly plausible. There was absolutely, absolutely no evidence presented by the state in the trial of the case that he was present when that truck was stolen or that he ever drove that truck, ever had contact with that truck, it was ever on his property. Uh, his suggestion that the guy brought the trailer to him to see if he wanted to buy it is consistent with somebody who did steal that property, trying to go in and pawn it off on people. Him paying six or $800 for what was the context is because all the valuables were already gone. All that was left was a bunch of stuff that after the whoever stole it, before it threw it. Uh, he, he admitted, yes, my print is on the trailer because he showed it to me and he wanted more money than I could afford. And so I didn't buy it. He offered me the other things that were there. Uh, the complainant specifically testified in his testimony, the things that were at Mr. Lozano's pro property that they recovered were of little or no value, right? If you look at the PSI report, when they go to the restitution, it says approximately $300,000. <clears> How can you approximate that? We've already been found guilty by a jury. Well, this court knows why. It's because her math was a mess. The complainant testified in the trial of the case that he agreed in writing a contractual agreement with the insurance company to settle for $240,000. The theft statute is very, very clear. It's the value of the property at the time it's stolen, not what you paid for it years before. So when you when you read their exhibits, and the jury obviously never did, they put no attention to the, to the real evidence in the case, 
They felt bad for the uh, complainants. I feel bad. We all do. They suffered a great loss, but they didn't prove he was the one who did it. They proved that he was a party to being in possession of some of the stolen property. That's why we had a jury charge all the way down to a state jail. That was the appropriate charge. This case is ripe and full of appeal issues, especially on the issue of the value and sufficiency of evidence. This case does not merit a, a day in prison. I get it. It's a big loss. But uh, if you look at uh, the exhibits, and I was going to bring it to you, but it's in the court, it's court's file or court court's file. USA went through an exhaustive list. And he says, I spent months, and I kept updating it, telling them all the things that I lost. They put the retail value. They depreciated it down to the actual cash value at the time of the loss, right? He signs an agreement, accepts the check, saying $240,000. If you And that included the truck. All right, so just so parties so know, I'm not going behind the jury's verdict. I'm, I'm not asking you to. Yeah, I'm, just, right. I'm just saying the punishment should fit the crime. Okay. The jury did what they did, and that's for another court to look at, whether there was sufficient evidence for their verdict. But my suggestion is, if they've proven that my guy drove off with a truck and the trailer and he had gotten rid of everything, I can see that this is a different case. There's absolutely no evidence that was presented to suggest that. And his explanation fits squarely within the facts that were presented in this case. So I get it that they're restitution. My client is going to have a lifetime consequence because of his resident status of potentially being excluded from this country. So he is going to get punished severely by this court and, and probably another one. So all that being said, Judge, we'd ask the court to send us into a term of probation. We'll, we'll, pay, we'll pay restitution to their number as best he can, as long as he can. Um, but that's the appropriate sentence. If, if we're going to start locking up every person who goes to a flea market and those people that come into property uh, illegally and they, and they get it in their possession, we're going to start sending them all to prison. We don't have a big enough jail for that, Judge. All right. Is there anything you wish to say? <clears throat> yes. All right. You want to raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. All right. And make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear. Who's the name of the friend that gave you these items? What's your name? Uh, I don't know his name. They called him. Well, I mean, you say he's your friend. Well, yeah, but and it, you say you received a phone call from a friend. Yes, there's sure about it. Down. All right, so here's my other question the items, because there were some items that were related to his military career. When you saw the name of persons, a person's name on military paperwork, what did you think? Um, <clears throat> at the point already, I had the stuff in my house. I didn't know what to do with it in the world. It was there. I bought it. It was in boxes when I bought it. By the time I got to open it, I saw the stuff. I, I, so how much money did you pay for this stuff? About 800 Whatever was in the trailer, I got it off. About 800 or 900 dollars Did you look through everything before you paid 800 or 900 just boxes. So you just take a boxes sight unseen, sort of like storage wars? Oh, yeah. All right. And so you don't know your friend's name who phoned y'all, phoned you, according to you, it says that you are home asleep on this date and you received a phone call from a friend. Yes, they, they call him Chaparro, but I, I, out of the top of my head, I, I can't remember his name right now. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, no problem. I just wanted that cleared up. All right. This is what the court is going to do. The court is going to sentence you to six years in the prison give you credit for any time served with regards to the amount the court does not deal in approximations so for the court there is no restitution because there is nothing here to suggest a rest restitution amount it just says approximately three hundred thousand dollars there's nothing i can do with that and this trial was on march 21st I'm sorry, just one moment. Yes, March 2024. So by that time, there should have been some amount to the court. So I'll give you credit for any time served. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing state? Judge, is the defendant's birthday uh, May 1st, 1998? Is that 
that right? You can ask him. Okay. Is that is that your birthday, sir? May first, nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. And Judge, would you, would you um incorporate the uh, evidence to trial as to the value? Would that be something you'd be willing to do? No, because again, the amount that's listed in the PSI report is approximately three hundred thousand dollars. And then defense counsel is correct with the amount that the complainant settled for. And I know how insurance companies do sometimes. Probably the amount, yeah, <laughs> the amount he's the insurance company settled for was two hundred and forty thousand dollars. So this is where we are. And this, if I could just one last thing on the record, I just want the court to be aware of the record to be clear that that approximation comes from the complainant. The PSI officer called the complainant to ask him that number. And that was his response. Yes. Even after his testimony that was presented to the court. I'm not arguing restitution unless there is some sort of deductible, which the court has not received any information on a deductible amount. So the court will sentence you to six years in the prison and give you credit for any time served. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? No, Your Honor. We just have uh, victim impact fees. I do, Judge. Yes. We will be filing a notice of appeal and request for an appeal bond. Do you want to take that up today? Or oh, you, you have to file a You'll have to file the motion, and the court will take that up. So, if you could have him fill out the trial court certification. Well, um, they're going to be filed today. That's why I'm asking if he could be kept in court today so we can address it. Or I'm, I'm, it's hearing. going to have to be another date. Okay. So, okay. All right. Once you, if you could have him do the trial court certification, so I could do that now, please. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes. All right, you have a right to an appeal as this was a jury trial. And counsel, once you uh, file that motion, uh, Ms. Ferguson will give you a date. Yes, all right, you said there's impact, brief impact? Yes, ma'am. All right. Are the parties here on Lozano? If you could start your video, please. Who is going to be the person? It's a Terry Kirkbride, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Kirkbride? Yes. All right, you may begin with your uh, impact statement. Okay, I had no, no idea what to expect in this matter, but um, I, I see the sentencing has already been done. I'll just try to keep it short. I think... The court's already heard most of our story, but I'll, I'll just go down the quick history. I mean, when we made our decision to move to Florida, it was to be near kids and grandkids. It was a pretty tough decision. Uh, I lived in California all my life up to that point. Sold our home, gave away pretty much all of our possessions that could be replaced, like furniture, refrigerators, that type of thing. Uh, all of our most precious items uh, were packed up very carefully. It took us almost three months to get everything properly packed and wrapped. And I bought a 24 foot enclosed trailer and that's where we packed everything in. Um, on our journey to our joyous move to Florida to start a new life, we made it as far as San Antonio. And of course, from that moment forward, December 4th forward, it's just like our world was turned upside down. It derailed our whole joy of the move. And what was supposed to be looking for a home right away turned into almost an eight-month endeavor because we were dealing with all of the aftermath of the theft. Um, it's, I'm a combat veteran. I kind of, like, I, I, one of my diagnoses is PTSD, so I was already dealing with that. And then this just totally derailed me and my wife. 
and left us kind of in this state of like, what next? As we put the pieces together, keep in mind, it's, it was three years, three months from the time of the theft to the time of the trial. And they had some 22, 23 resets. Each one of those resets represented to us is we had to juggle our lives around the schedule of the court. We gave up family vacations, gave up visiting sick family members. We did a lot of things during those three and a half years, three, three years, three months that just just kept this thing going. And now we're here at the final final part of the sentencing and all that. And um, I I feel for the for both sides. I feel for Mr. Lozano and and how this must be for him. But I also got to understand what it was like for us. These weren't just things that you go to the store and buy. These were this was our life. Uh, my my wife is a Native American studies. She she had all of her research that was in those boxes that are gone. All of my VA records, all of our photographs of our family from the past, videos of the kids, all those things that cannot be replaced, along with all my military accolades that are gone. Um, the impact was great. And I am glad that we're finally at a at a at a point for us, anyways, where we can just kind of turn the page. Um, I I I think that's enough said. All right, thank you. And deputy, you can take him into custody. What is his client's name? Marco Antonio Vasquez. All right, Marco Antonio Marino Vasquez. We're ready, Judge. All right, come down, sir. Yes. We're going to need the interpreter. Oh, she's here. All right, uh, Mr. Moreno Vasquez, you've received the plea. Offer from the state. Yes, you gave me an offer. All right. Did you understand it? Honestly, I don't know why they're offering me. No, 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 no. Let me stop you right there. Here's the thing. You're charged with murder. That's what the state is offering. All I need to know from you is whether or not you receive the offer. That's yes or no. Yes, I did receive the offer. All right. So are you accepting the offer or rejecting the offer? Or do you need time to think about the offer? No, no, no. Rejects it. All right. Ms. Ferguson, state how long? Uh, will this jury trial last? Judge, on this particular one, it's codependent. Okay. And so it, it, it doesn't have a lot of moving parts. So actually, case in chief, I'd imagine three A's, tops. But that's not including jury selection or the punishment. All right, Ms. Ferguson. It's going to be a week for a jury trial on Mr. Marco Antonio Marino Vasquez. And State, I know you have other murder cases upcoming. Yes. So if you want to speak to Ms. Okay. Ferguson. And Judge, there's a code incident case. They may want to go on a code incident case first. All right. Well, we'll put this down and we'll see who goes first. And Joseph Stateson? Yes, Your Honor. Monica Guerrero is on the co-defendant on this case. I was hoping to announce after this announcement was finished. Okay. 
first one. I don't have any plans for any other. All right, what, September 3rd. Your jury trial date is going to be September 3rd. All right. Is there, you have any questions? Yes. And you'll be brought over dressed in whatever civilian clothing you have at the jail. If you wish to be attired in something different, you'll need to speak to your attorney and sign a clothing exchange. I'll take care of that, Judge. All right, thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Stateson, are you ready on? I am. Okay. Adis Rivas. All right, Rivas Hernandez, come down. Yes. Rivas. 